it can be traumatic for you, let's say, you know, you're an individual who needs to talk about the the sexual assault that happened to you years ago. Maybe you're, you know, the family member that needs to talk about some racially motivated behaviors that happened to you on your job. Maybe you need to talk about your divorce and your deteriorating relationship. How can you talk about those things if the person is overly positive? You I really love and miss my maternal grandmother. I lost her now two years ago in 2020 during the thick of COVID. Um, she did not pass away from COVID. She was a very healthy 74 year old woman. So I miss her. I in no way mean anything bad by saying she was overly positive. I mean, when I take time and think about my grandmother, there were times when I would look at her and I would think, why are you so happy? For some reason, she just saw life in a certain way, you know? And, and I tend to be, you know, no matter how outgoing I appear on this camera, pessimistic. And, and I think I'm pessimistic because I know the truth of most things, if you know what I mean. Um, I know the truth of mental health conditions. I know the truth of personality disorders, you know. I have my religious and spiritual beliefs. I have studied human behavior for a very long time under very experienced researchers, scientists, and other human beings. And so, you know, you know, and let me just mention this as well. My experiences in psychotherapy gives me a peek into a lot of people's thought processes and emotions in life. And, you know, I, I, I call it justified pessimism. But my grandmother and so many people like her and maybe people in your own life, the positivity is a little toxic. It's just too much, you know? And, and I would look at my grandmother and I would think, oh my God, here we go again. Why are we being positive? Sometimes it felt like she was detached, but it also felt like she was denying the existence of challenges and problems because it was just too hard for her. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about something known as toxic positivity within your family. And I want to highlight what's going on here because there are people that have come in and out of my life who, who tend to be very positive no matter what, but it can actually harm you. But before we jump in, let me briefly introduce myself in case you were new. My name is Tamara. I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, let me start off by explaining toxic positivity. So toxic positivity for, for you know, as practical as I can make this and, and down to earth, it is basically overly positive. It's somebody who really doesn't have the ability to communicate in a natural, balanced, and authentic way. Every single thing that they say, they do, or every way that they look at life somehow ends with a positive mindset, a statement, something. It's always positive. Now, the clinical version of toxic positivity is it's a dismissal of negative experiences or negative thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that, that really seeks to falsify reality. So there's like a false reassurance there uh, with a person who's really toxic and positive at the same time. Uh, these individuals really do have a false sense of assurity and comfort and safety, and they live their life based on these things. I, you know, I had a, a family friend years ago who was very, very positive. Now she's a little bit more balanced and realistic. And her son had an autism spectrum disorder. And he was more on the severe end where there was no speech, there was no eye contact, there was no ability to function really. Um, he needed a lot of support. She came to me uh, when her son was diagnosed with autism and said, he is diagnosed with autism. It doesn't bother me because I know autism is becoming a diagnosis that's more uh, popular or more well known. She said, I'm not depressed about this diagnosis because I know I have money and I have access to the best services. Uh, she also said, my husband is a professor in mental health and so he can help us. I'm, here's her words, I'm in the best position ever to have a child with autism. 
for most of us, we would probably break down in tears and cry. If we had a seven or eight year old that um, didn't have the ability to potty train, didn't have the ability to be mature for his age, didn't have the ability to really think and process things on his own, right? We would probably break down and cry and grieve the loss of a normal experience for our child, right? That's a normal response. Instead, you know, this family friend swung, swung way over to the left and made the whole experience a positive one. Even when the child began to refuse treatment, uh, when he turned, I think it was 15, he refused any kind of treatment, she still made that a positive thing. Here's how she twisted it. She said, you know what? He's growing up and refusing treatment shows me he's mature. What? So, you know, there are a lot of people like her and unfortunately that's not healthy because what's going to happen is somewhere along the line of life and all of its unpredictable forks in the road and stops and, you know, turns and whatever else, you're going to find out that life cannot always be positive. I think these particular individuals live in a state of denial. They live in a false fantasy, in a candy land, because that's their way of coping. But unfortunately, if you're the person standing on the outside of that overly positive behavior within your family, you're most likely going to suffer because, because the individual, as I'm gonna point out in a few seconds here, is not going to be able to empathize with you because they themselves can't feel it. They're too positive. So let's jump in to what these particular family members look like. So the first thing that you are likely to, to see in an individual uh, within your family who's overly positive is a false reassurance of reality. We may be going through uh, the fiery place right on earth and this positive person is going to turn and look at us and say, grow from that experience, which is true. But there are some people who minimize your pain and they give you these propped up, overly positive, uh, uh, you know, uh, nudges of encouragement, I'll say, as opposed to really looking at you and saying, I know it hurts. Normal relationships include the, the reciprocal expression of negative and positive emotions, right? There's a balance. But for overly positive and toxic people, right? And I call them toxic because it's just toxic. It's unhealthy. For overly positive, toxic people, right? There's no reciprocal exchange of negative and positive emotions or sad and happy happy emotions, right? Um, the, the overly positive person tends to dominate by minimizing your pain, minimizing your reality, whether they realize it or not. I'm of the firm belief that toxic positivity can be intentional or unintentional. You know, there are some, you know, individuals who really want to just live in a candy land. And so they intentionally block you and block anything that you're going through because it's going to impede upon their wonderful candy land that they live in. Imagine having a parent like this, right? Because we go to our parents all the time about things. If we have good parents, I'm saying we, you know, as, as adult children, if you have a good parent or caregiver, you go to them with all your pain. Sometimes you go to them with, with positive things and painful things, right? But if you have an overly positive parent who, who tends to look at the world through rose-colored glasses, you're not gonna get that. The next thing that you are likely to see is minimization of reality. Oh, that's not what she meant. She wrote her eyes, but I think it's because you may have offended her. She did not mean it to hurt you. She's a wonderful person. She would never talk bad about anyone. And you know, she would be there for you if, you know, and, and the list just goes on. It's like this condescending tone of get over your hurt feelings. I need you to be positive. I need you to see this in a positive way. And the sad reality is that it may not be a positive situation. You're spinning it to be positive. Does that really mean it's positive? Probably not. But the overly positive person is going to say something along the lines of, I think you're taking it too personal. And that's their way of minimizing reality. And it's so, so selfish, right? Because that person is trying to change and mold things in a way that makes life easier on them. And yet it's making it hard on you because you're not validated. The next thing is avoidance and defense mechanisms. Now, let me point out a few things here. So uh, defense mechanisms such as, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Sublimation, 
and displacement. I'll put the definition on the screen here. Uh, other avoidance tactics and defense mechanisms would be gaslighting. Whether the, the overly positive person sees themselves or not, sometimes they do gaslight, right? You may go to your family member, for example, and say, you know what, your neighbor just came outside while I was trying to bring the groceries in and, you know, they were standing and watching like I'm stealing something. They were just being really rude. They didn't speak. They didn't say anything to me. They just watched me get the groceries out of the trunk and bring them in. You know, I, I saw how he was looking at me. You know, he's a mean neighbor. The positive family member, the overly positive family member is gonna spin it like this and say, no, I think that's probably what you thought. And I know it can look like he's rude, but he tends to be a nice person. Everybody in the neighborhood says he's a nice person. It's probably just you. You're having a bad day but everything will be fine. All you need to do is go home and get some rest. And next time you come to my house, he'll probably smile at you. He's a great person. There we go again. Gaslighting, being overly positive, you know, really minimizing reality um, and making you feel like you're the one who's crazy or seeing things negatively. The other thing that they are likely to do is stonewall. If you're not gonna be positive with them and pat them on the shoulder and say life is great and everything is gonna be okay and hold hands and sing kubaya, you know, that person may stop talking to you. They may stop reflecting about life with you. They may stop having conversations with you that can clarify a lot of issues, right? So stonewalling is, I'm not gonna talk to you. I'm going to avoid you because you're not my kind of person. And unfortunately, that can come across as very narcissistic and very selfish. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias basically means this, that I have a particular belief system and so in order for me to keep my candy land reality going, I need to find proof for how I'm thinking about life. And so confirmation bias is basically this. I look for proof to confirm that the way I think and feel is correct and nothing else matters, even the disapproval of how I think and feel. I have to look for confirmation that I am okay, that my beliefs are okay, that my thoughts and feelings are okay. And so these kind of individuals may stonewall, right? Refuse to talk to you. They may minimize your reality and gaslight you because you are not what they need. You're a poison in their positive candy land. And so, you know, unfortunately, they're going to look all around you. They're going to look for confirmation, maybe in books, maybe online, you know, maybe with friends, coworkers to prove that their overly positive way of existing in life is okay. The next thing is forced positive thinking. Now, here's what I mean by forced positive thinking. Something terrible is happening. You're divorcing. You go to your aunt because you know that your aunt has been through four marriages. You need information on how a divorce actually happens and what to look for and you know how to manage it. Your aunt who has been through four marriages may say something like, you know, you're free now. You can go ahead and date every man you want. Go online and find men, you know, go to your nearest bar and find some more guys to be with. Life is wonderful. You're sitting, you're crying, you're depressed. You wish your marriage would have lasted. You feel like a failure. You feel like you wasted money on a huge wedding. You know, you're going to have to carry bills. You're going to have to pay attorneys. You know, you're going to have to tell your children that you guys are divorcing. Like there's a lot to divorce, right? So nobody He's gonna you know see that as a cakewalk but an overly positive family member even if they themselves had really difficult situations to live through four marriages that failed for example they're gonna still make it positive they're gonna still make it positive it's forced positive thinking no matter what I'm gonna be positive the next thing is you know an inability to feel and relate there, like I said earlier there's no reciprocal emotional exchange that person's positive they're gonna always remain positive and you're not gonna change who they are. That's practically their mindset. And so they can actually come across as having absolutely no empathy, right? Because, because in order for us to have empathy as human beings, we have to be able to jump outside of our own heads and experiences and really turn the lens on another person and really feel the pain and imagine the pain 
of the other person. But if you don't have that ability to feel reality because everything is too positive, you know, then it almost makes you look like you don't have empathy. And so therefore you come across as narcissistic or sociopathic. The next thing is psychological blindness. Now, here's what I mean by psychological blindness. You, the, the, the overly positive person does not have the ability to pause and see the, the error of their ways. They truly believe, most of them, that their positivity is helpful, healthy, adaptive, right? Balanced. They don't seem to understand that your positive thinking, your forced positivity, your gaslighting, your confirmation bias, your stonewalling, all of that is unhealthy. The next thing is emotional blindness. And what I mean by emotional blindness is a lack of empathy, narcissism, you know, it's, it's, it's this it's this attitude that says, I'm not going to allow myself to feel pain, to cry, to be angry, to be overwhelmed, right? Unless I really find that it is helpful because I have to maintain my glass house. I have to maintain my positive Candyland world. And so, you know, it can almost feel like they can't, like I said earlier, like they cannot feel your emotions. And so they're psychologically blind because they can't see the air of their way. And they are emotionally blind because they do not allow themselves to experience pain, hurt, anger. And if they do, and I've had many clients like this, they tend to feel guilty, overwhelmed, or as if they've done something wrong. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do people get this way? Well, let me just say, research on that is mixed. We have very little research on toxic positivity. It is a subject that more and more people are starting to study and, and try to pick and pull apart. Positive psychology is an area of study that really targets this and, and trying to understand this. Um, I would say, especially within families where there's family members who are overly positive, I think it's a learned behavior as well. Um, it's a learned behavior within your family system. Maybe for generations, that positive mindset was passed on. And, you know, there was some kind of cultural shift within your family that allowed that family member to really think in positive ways and then perpetuate that mindset through generations. So, so it's kind of like an uh, adaptive, learned response from somebody who modeled it, you know? So so there's an environmental component to this. I also think there's a cultural component. I, I think, you know, uh, uh, Americans have this mentality that in order to be socially acceptable, in order to be uh, socially astute and appear educated and together, together, you have to approach life with a positive mindset. And I strongly disagree with that. I, I think we need to approach life in a balanced way, not in an overly positive mindset, because if you're overly positive, you're gonna miss some very important things in your life. There may be other races of people, if you guys know, let me know in the comment section below, or other ethnicities where positive thinking is, is this cultural norm. But I do know for sure people in the United States are really hung up on that. If you're not positive, you're not successful. If you don't have a positive outlook, you're never gonna make it anywhere. And that's completely false. I I also think it is uh, partially, what's the word? I think it's partially engineered by some people, but they know that they have to switch their behavior in order to be accepted. And so it's engineered positivity. It's, I'm gonna throw the smile on, I'm gonna throw my big pretty white teeth up, I'm going to put on this loud voice, I'm gonna walk confident, and people are gonna know that, I'm, that I made it, that I'm perfect, I'm lovely and I'm not a negative person. So for, you know, a very positive family member to come along and 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 just, you know, overwhelm me, I'm like, "Oh my god, please just back up two steps and and please give me time to think and respond, you know?" And if you're like that, you know exactly what I mean. But you know, this is a topic, guys, you're probably going to see more of. I'll try to do a little bit more videos on the research and scientific components of this topic. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do that. Thank you so much for being with me today, guys. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful or interesting to you. Hit that subscribe and bell button so you can get notifications. That also helps the channel out a ton. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. I'm a